Hello everybody, my name is Petr Koutny and we are following together the Tata Steel Tournament 2022, the game of the day, round number 12, Magnus Karasen as a black and Fabio Caruana as a white. Fabio Caruana is one of the strongest chess grandmaster of this world, but at the other side, and I hope I'm right, that I will tell you that Magnus Karasen, world chess champion, is up to me, one of the strongest chess players of chess history. And you will see how Magnus Karasen is going to beat another super strong a master and even with black pieces that's amazing story and another amazing story is power of two bishops you will see how Magnus Karasen is playing with these two bishops and even he will be exchanged down he will got strong compensation in his two bishops and I hope that this is nice lesson to us to have better understanding and to believe in two bishops okay let's start and let's watch. Uh, two bishops are still here, but now they are not important because what's more important is a pawn center. D4 pawn and E4 pawn are only two pawns in the center, and of course, this is the biggest white's advantage. And it's important to attack, to challenge, or to destroy this um, pawn center and to be active. For this reason, move D6 is not the best move because it's a passive and it's not going to destroy this center. And much more stronger is move D5, and of course, this move is the best move here in this position. And Magnus Karasen played move D5. Okay, white played move E5, and it's up to you what you will play. You have choice to be more passive or more active. Of course, knight to d7 is not the best move because this move is passive and knight to e4 is much more stronger. Believe me that if you have choice between to be passive and aggressive, be aggressive. It's a stronger plan. Okay, Magnus Karasen played knight to e4 and white played move bishop to e3 uh, this bishop is a bad bishop because it's sitting exactly behind this pawn formation but at the other side is doing important job this bishop is uh, supporting important d4 pawn and this pawn is important because it's supporting important e5 pawn so even this bishop is passive bad and not active it's doing a good job and for this reason is important Important for this position. So it's bad, it's important. Um, Magnus Karasen immediately is taking on uh, d4 this pawn. Why is he taking this pawn? Because he is going to open a c file. And just imagine that you are black and you are going to open a c file. Next, your plan will be to bring your rooks to open file and to be first on open file. Open file is important and if you are first there, you should have advantage. So Magnus Karasen has a simple plan. He's going to open open file and he opened. And of course, he played queen to b6. He's going to attack uh, this bishop on b5. Just think about this exchange what do you think it's a good move to take this knight on c6 of course no because as i told you we will see huge power of two bishops and it's not good idea to give you um, one of your bishops for nothing of course you need to see any reason why to exchange your bishop for a knight and why is right because he played now immediately to e2 and he's going to support to save his bishop on b5 at least for a while uh, bishop to d7 and bishop to a4 and uh, rook to c8 of course not hard move and of course this move is making sense because as i told you here is the open file and that was exactly planned in a time when Magnus Karasen took pawn on d4 because he opened c file and he is going to be there first. It's important to be there first, of course, uh, not to c3. Magnus Karasen knows that this knight on e4 is his best knight, but he's going to he's going to take this knight and he believes that he is going to make at least small weakness. And it's important to think like a master. So make Weakness and attack weakness. That's the best plan. So Magnus Karasen took on c3 and now maybe he's going to surprise you because he played this maybe not nice move. But why he's playing this move? He know that one day, sooner or later, White will play this move and he will be attacking this queen and this pawn. So why to wait for this move? Why to wait and sit exactly 
when white will play this move. So Magnus Carlsen is going out of this threat immediately and <laughs> no way and this move will be there such a strong. So uh, white played the bishop to b3 and I don't like this move at all because Magnus know that this bishop is important, is going to attack this pawn and he's going to play knight to e5 and he's ready to take this bishop on b3 and he will take this bishop on b3. But in time when he will take this bishop, he will get two bishops advantage. And that's exactly what's going on. Now it's very hard to imagine that these two bishops are strong. It's very hard to imagine that these two bishops will win this game, but at least they are they are and they will be strong soon so knight to a5 and this pawn looks like is for free of course it's not for free because at the end of the day black will take this pawn on a c3 uh, maybe not immediately i will show this variation so uh, white should take on d5 but that's only variation I think that a nice move is bishop to f5 and here this bishop is under attack, of course. If this bishop is going here, uh, Magnus will take, I think, and one day will take this pawn back. So, makes sense to play move uh, c4, of course. Looks like this bishop is lost after move e6, but it's not. Bishop to g5, queen to d7, and now it's time to go to d5. Maybe this is a nice variation, but I think that uh, d4 pawn is a weak pawn. This uh, g5 bishop is a bad bishop, and uh, d5 square is a weak square. What's more important is here still open c file, and black is there first. So, I'm sure that here black is fine and maybe this is the reason why white was not interesting to play this position. Let's come back because uh, here exactly we saw knight to e5, a5, white played rook to c1 immediately. Magnus Karasen is taking on b3 this bishop and he know that he got two bishops advantage. Of course, that is, this is not a winning advantage but I know that uh, two bishops are nice weapon and it's good idea to believe in this advantage and to play for this advantage. Uh, happened king to b6 and now a5. Okay, another move makes sense and c4 I think is a bad move. Why? Because if you have two bishops, you are interesting to play open position. Two bishops are much more stronger in open position than not open and after this move here is interesting pawn a5 just imagine that this pawn is going one day to a3 a2 and maybe this pawn is a winning pawn so at least he is a strong plan yes of course uh, these two bishops are not strong now but you have to believe them and you have to wait for the best chance to play with their power. So, Magnus Karasen, one more time, is going out of another threat, <laughs> same threat, and there is no threat, and he's going to attack immediately this pawn on c4. He wished to see move c5 because, just imagine, and it's not important, imagine because white is going to play move c5, that uh, white's dark square bishop is still bad, and what's, most, what's more important, this light square bishop is going to c6 as, and has a nice job. So, now, step by step, move by move, just watch these two bishops, uh, these two bishops, will be absolutely uh, monstrous. So, root to b1, a4, a4, one day a3, a2, a1. This is another strong plan. And root to c1. Magnus Karasen is going to place his rook to d8. And uh, now he played a nice move, keeping to e2. Yes, of course, this queen is not going to win anything immediately, but it's a danger there. And it's doing a nice job because, you know, for example, imagine that that is going here and here is a checkmate. Of course, Black will see this checkmate, but at least he's going to make threats and he's going to attack. He's going to attack um, some weaknesses. Yes, uh, a free happened and now Amazing move. Magnus Karasen is going to take on d4. I can't believe that this move is working. I can't believe that anybody in this world 
will play this move against Fabio Caruana. And Magnus Carlsen is playing this move and this is a nearly, nearly winning move. Of course, at the end of this variation, he will be exchanged down, but he will take another pawn here and he will go to bishops. It's hard to see everything what Magnus Carlsen has to see, but he saw it. He took on d4. Wow, what a move and what a chess power. So, okay, let's check this variation. Everything makes sense and e6. And now he change a, a queens and take another pawn. So, as we know, two bishops, two pawns, but for one exchange. But I'm sure that this position is nearly lost. Why? Here is a one pawn, danger pawn, and need only three moves to be a winning pawn. Here, these two pawns have only one opponent. So, f5, e5, e4, and of course, e3, e2, and another winning pawn. And uh, it's important to see this open d file because, yes, every open file is important, but there is no squares to go there and there's, there are no squares to be aggressive there. So these two bishops are nice in a defense because they are going to defend important, say, open defile, but they are nice in attack. For example, here, um, and this bishop is, is watching important a1 square. So, nice position and Magnus Karasen is going to play this position as a master. Okay, he played something like this and he will play a move like f, f6, f5, e5, e4 and let's go on, let's go on and let's win this game. Magnus Karasen is up to me one of the strongest chess players and another passed pawn, another winning pawn, two bishops there and there is nothing to play, there is nothing to attack and you know, this is doing a nice job, there's nothing to do against this bishop and maybe this bishop right now is much more stronger than rook. Magnus Karasan is playing like Amadeus, like master. So, okay, e4, check, no different, and here there is no improvement for white, but plenty of improvements for black. And here uh, white resign. Why? Because black will go one day here, here, will take his pawn and then he will got two winning pawns on, on the right side and one on the left side. There is nothing to play. This position is absolutely lost and there was another great and amazing uh, victory of Magnus Karasen against one of the strongest chess grandmaster of this world. So, we are at the end of this video. I hope you saw maybe immortal chess game of Magnus Karasen. I hope you saw interesting my commentary. So feel free and press like and press follow if you like this video and if you like to follow my YouTube chess channel. Thank you very much. See you soon in our another YouTube chess video and have a nice day. Thank you and bye bye.